I was an enforcer and I did a lot of bad things, you know, that, you know, that anger started to come out in me. And I really hurt a lot of people in my life and I really destroyed a lot of homes and a lot of people's families and, you know, I encouraged a lot of young people in my community to come, you know, into the gang life. Stay good day. Welcome, my friends, to The Storyteller, where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. On today's program, we'll hear from a man who was gripped with anger in his youth. He honed his fighting skills in the boxing ring and then took them to the streets as a gang enforcer. But his biggest battle would take place in his heart. My name is Thomas Ranville from the Paul Manitoba, Canada. I'm E.T. I just want to tell you my story about my life. You know how um, I came to know the only one that could set me free from the unforgiveness and the bitterness that I had since I was a child. I didn't feel loved because when I was a child, I was bullied. When I was younger, and in the school that I went to, it was a mixed school, and from there I was I was bullied, and picked on by all my older brothers, you know. And I thought they were gonna help me, but you know, I grew up in a home where there was a lot of alcohol, you know, a lot of violence. First time I drank was when I was six years old. You know, it was a life that I wanted to run away from. I had a lot of anger in my life. I didn't know. I didn't really know. I didn't feel loved. First time I was, I think I was about 10 years old that time when, when I was, you know, really thinking about, you know, my life, anger. When I started to lift weights, by the time I was 11, I started, you know, really working out because I was angry. And I found myself mixed up with the wrong people. Ended up in Manitoba Youth Center, you know, and I ended up doing six months there for, you know, for things that I did that I wanted to get away from my home. So the only way I could escape the way I thought was to go to jail and found myself in there fighting every day because I was I was angry. I was I had to prove myself. Plus I didn't care for anything or anyone. I didn't feel loved. I had a lot of bitterness and anger. I didn't really know my father because he worked twenty three hours a day, sometimes even thirty five hours at a time, you drove cab. You know, my mother was an alcoholic. I didn't really, really know her too. But the other way, then she was drinking and... But you know, my dad always, you know, provided food for us. You know, and he came out to me in the youth center, you know, and visited me and he had tears in his eyes. I felt, you know, that, um... I just felt, you know, the love, you know, that that he had, you know, like he was crying. He traveled all the way from Nepal. But when he, he came and sat there and he cried and he was broken before me, you know, it made me feel, you know, that my father was sorry. And we kind of started over. Because, you know, I didn't really know him. And it kind of gave us a fresh start. And he said, you know, that I want to start over. I want to get you into boxing. And I was thinking right on, I want to get into boxing. Yeah, sure. You know, because there was a counselor in MYC that said, you know, you should get into boxing because I was a good fighter in there. And so I got into boxing. I made it, you know, deal with my father. And we got into boxing. We traveled. He bought me boxing equipment, boxing jackets, boxing vehicle you know, to travel around with, and we, you know, we did, did very good, became a provincial champion, 
went to different fights all over and knocked out a lot of guys because I had a lot of anger. That's sort of how I, you know, wanted to release that anger is through, through violence. And I thought, you know, like I imitated Mike Tyson. I was, all I wanted to do is knock guys out and I was very good at that. And, but you know, I knew about God. I know there was a God because my mother sent me to Sunday school, but yet I wasn't really listening, paying attention. Pretty young back then, but you know, I in the youth center, I remember going to a Christian youth conference and hearing them sing. And they said, you know, our God is an awesome God, and that's the first time I I, I got a revelation of the Lord and. I remember talking to somebody there, and, but at the time I I didn't really know about being born again. You need to be born again by the Spirit. You need to turn from your wicked ways, you know, and you need to live for God. And there was no follow up, so I just kind of went back to the same way when I got got back with my old friends when I got out of jail. And but you know, I I traveled lots with my my father. Even though my friends were trying to get me into drinking and all that, I I just trained for two solid years and found myself in the ring with a Canadian champion. Knocked him on the first round, you know, and, and from there, you know, I started to drink pride, started building up in me and started to drink and I started doing the wild things. And that's where I, I found out, you know, what you sow is what you reap. I got back in the ring at that same champ. He beat me, he outboxed me. And then from there I just quit and took everything for granted and just started to drink. I was involved with the gang about, for about seven years. When I was 28, I got involved deep with the gang life. I really wanted to uh, prove myself how tough I was. And I ended up knocking five guys out from outside the bar when they were trying to fight some guy and I ended up knocking them all out and and then uh, those gang members saw that hey man, we'll use this guy. So they, you know, they, my friend was involved with the gang already. He was involved since, you know, for many years and I got involved with, through him, you know, and he just told me, you know, that you can be my, you know, my enforcer. And I thought right on, well, I'm a good fighter. I can, I can do that. You know, and he asked me in a party, you know, there's a bunch of them. They said, you with us or you against us? You know, of course I said, sure. Well, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Everybody out there, every young person, every person out there is looking for love, protection that the gang can give, acceptance, you know, and that's what I, I thought, you know, well, if I join them, I know I'll be protected if I ever go to prison because there's a lot of gang members in there, so I thought, yep. Yeah. This is the way, you know, and I eventually led me to the path of despair. I was an enforcer and I did a lot of bad things, you know, that, you know, that anger started to come out in me and I really hurt a lot of people in my life and I really destroyed a lot of homes and a lot of people's families and, you know, I encourage a lot of young people in my community to, to come, you know, into the gang life. They looked up to me because I was a, you know, tough guy and solid and, you know, end up in Henley Correctional, you know, and sitting in jail. A lot of people, you know, they find that as an escape route from the outside world you know, from their problems. It's a way to, that's the way I thought, you know, oh well, 
I'm having a problem out here with the things, my circumstances and that, so I'm gonna go to jail. And so I'd go, but you know, I'd come back out because charges didn't follow through. There's a lot of witness intimidation. And um, I just got back out and got involved deeply with the gang, got the respect, got that, you know, it was a false love, it was a false sense of security. You know, this one time I was in Italy, you know, they're saying they have Bible studies, you know, and they're having church service, so I went again, you know, I was searching. God had a call on my life, but you know, I was running, running from it. I didn't want to, you know, submit to it, because I still had anger and unforgiveness and bitterness towards the things, you know, that happened in my life. And, um, Found myself in Headley again. I in there. I asked the Lord. I said, I don't want to come back to jail no more. I wanna, I wanna start fresh, you know. And but I only had I, all I had was a reputation. All I had was known, be known as a gang member. And people, you know, they all in my community. All they heard about with me was being a bad guy. And so, but the Lord, you know, set up divine appointments for me to get a job. You know, and He provided me the home provided me with a family you know he was faithful even though I was faithless I didn't really come to myself till the end of myself till October 2005 just about a year after the incident at my home the Lord blessed me with a home but I turned that home into a clubhouse for the gang my brother knew about it and he Asked this pastor, pray for me. And from there, you know, God started to do work within my heart. New Year's of 2004, I was, we had a party. There was a lot of booze. I was drinking, was trying to get drunk, trying to pop pills, drinking a lot of whiskey, and lot of, you know, I couldn't get drunk. And then, you know, and, I, and the Lord showed me he showed me the the wickedness in people. The wickedness that when they get it under the influence of alcohol. It was that night in the clubhouse where Thomas finally saw things as they really were. And what happened next would change his life forever. He'll share about that next time, but what about you? Have you come to the end of yourself? Are you broken over your sin? My friend, turn to God and receive the love and forgiveness that He offers you in Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross for our sins penalty so that we could be forgiven and have peace with God forever. He tells us, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you want to know more, we have a free resource we'd like to send you called What If? Ask for it when you write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877 766 46 our web address is withoutreservation.com. You can also find us at facebook.com forward slash withoutreservation. Thanks for listening. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's more to Thomas' story, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to... The Storyteller.